certainly Gorilla was one of the first to show us that real attacking flair in FIFA. And then Tex has kind of replicated that in the newer era of FIFA competition and has gone down as one of the best attacking players around. So I'm expecting pretty explosive FIFA between the two of them. But we also know that they have competed against each other in FIFA 20 before. It was back in Paris in the Foot Champions Cup. It was only throughout the Swiss stages, but Gorilla did take that one 3-2 against Tex. So... That's the last time they went up against each other, at least in land competition. Slightly different environment now playing from home or whether it be a studio or whatnot. But I'm excited for these two to go down because I think every time they go up against each other, we see something different. One of them is trying to bring something new to the table. And I know we're quite late now in the iteration of FIFA 20, but it seems like they still surprise us. Alan, we've obviously got new rules in place for the E-Champions League. You can only use certain items that are available. Talk us a little bit through that for, for everyone watching. So yeah, so the, the players that can use four icons, um, nothing more than that. They also have to use all the different variations of the UCL items, like Road to the Final, Team of the Group Stage, just to sort of match the theme of this tournament. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what players they select. They can use a full icon squad. Players are not in the Champions League competition. So um, we'll definitely see what the selection is that they made and how they benefit from it. Yeah, I'll let you keep your eyes peeled on any interesting selection across the board. But here we go, the kickoff then of the E Champions League. And we are going to have Gorilla from left to right in the yellow and blue. And we're going to have Tex from right to left in his usual red of the Liverpool strip, of course. And these two will always put on a show, but we might start to see a little bit of a rocky situation and just kind of feeling each other out in these opening stages. It's what we often see, just trying to suss out how they're going to be approaching the game, what kind of formation is going to be on offer as... On the early stages, Tex certainly is going forward well. A couple of one-twos makes a little bit of space for Cruyff here on the edge of the box. Turns, he delivers as well, but to Stegen with the save. But early chance for Tex. Did you see there, Tex using Johan Cruyff, the great dribbling. Uh, like you said, that these guys are probably going to start a little slow, a little bumpy, but I feel like um, as they get comfortable on the sticks, we're going to see a uh, definite master class in the attack. Well, nine on the edge of the box now. Just a couple of skills to try and beat the man. Does have plenty of players around him. And Tex certainly dominating the early stages of this possession as Cruyff twists and turns on the edge again, but it's to Stegen, just palming it away, but not to safety. He tries to nod it back in, but nothing just yet, and now a chance for Gorilla to stretch his legs. I'm noticing that Tex is taking those shots, trusting Johan Cruyff, not from sort of inside the box. He's taking those long shots, probably testing out Gorilla's goalkeeper's team will work with doesn't. Yeah, I mean, goalkeeper movement was something that was huge throughout FIFA 19. FIFA 20, it's not quite as important, but still those subtle differences can make or break a game. And maybe Tex just sussing out Gorilla, seeing if that goalkeeper movement is going to be in place. As now has Mbappe on the left-hand side, back to Hullet in the middle. And R9 is there yet again, just tries to get past the man, but can't do so. But certainly from what we've seen in the opening stages here, Tex dominating possession and Gorilla just kind of waiting for his moment. Yes, and that's how it is. Tex is very dangerous on the attack. Definitely not a player that you want on the top of your own box. He offers so many skill moves, as we see the elastic goes. Basically always has his thumb on the right skilling stick. So a girl is gonna, has gonna have to be aware of that. But now girl is on the ball. We'll see what attack he brings. Yeah, whether he can do something and try and disrupt this spell of possession, which he has found quite his fair share now at this point. R9 tries to beat Hullet, but that's why Hullet is in the team. That's why he's so strong. and. I mean, looking across the players that have been selected, are there any surprises for you, Alan, or is this fairly standard what you're expecting? Fairly standard. However, though, we do see that Gorilla, instead of using Conte like Texas, he's using a Val Verde, the Real Madrid midfielder. We're definitely going to have to see how that plays out. I've also been seeing that they're using Jordi Alba. Barcelona, Spanish, left back, offers pace down the wing. Um, good defense, solid defense. So other than that, basic standard. Yeah, a lot of these team of the group stage and road to the final items are being used. And they certainly have been springing up in the right places at the right times for these players. We'll see whether they can actually grab a goal. There's now Tex going forward yet again. It's going to be Cruyff, the danger man, but it's Cruyff on Cruyff action. And Gorilla doing well to just stop Tex in his tracks. It does seem like Gorilla has a good read on Tex's attacks right now. Yeah, he definitely is playing very solid defense. He's going to have to keep this up against a player like Tex who can definitely exploit any spaces you give him. You as a player, I mean, you've gone up against some of the best around, if not the best players around. You know how difficult it can be when they're just attack after attack after attack. But Gorilla has broken through here. R9 will just go for the drag back, but Hullet's there. 
And do you think this is a good approach from Gorilla? The kind of sitting back, waiting for his moment, and then attacking Tex when he gets the count move? Yes, as we've seen there, he almost beat Tex with the drag back, showing some nice uh, possession play, and then, you know, getting a chance inside the box. As we see Gorilla as well, he's playing very good defense. He just has to make sure that he keeps it very solid, doesn't slip up on his player switching so that Tex doesn't get the, the first goal of the game. And just to give you all the lay of the land at home, if you've only just joined us, this is going to be Group A of the E-Champions League. It's not just these two in the group, it's also Megabit and Dullen Mike. And something that's pretty cool about the E-Champions League Invitational is we're seeing at least one world champion in the group, one playoff champion in the group, and then two foot Champions Cup winners as well. So, so much trophies amongst all eight players that have been invited. And in this particular group, I mean, Gorilla versus Tex, we knew this was going to be a good one, but it is going to be double elimination in the group. So even if a player were to lose across these two legs, they still get that chance to progress to the latter stages. Pull it now, we'll play it through. Does find Mbappe and Tex again, just trying to sneak his way past Vieira, but maybe didn't quite get the right skill move there. I feel like Gorilla's playing very great defense right now. As we mentioned a little earlier, he just got to keep his structure, not let Tex get through. We are seeing Gorilla down the wing, played over the top ball. Not good enough. You're right, structure is what can sometimes win you these games, and Gorilla does seem to be very tidy at the back. Not making Tex struggle a little bit, and just as I say that, Felix is going to recover the ball now for Gorilla. Now he can look to break, see if he can try and penetrate this defense of Tex. See if he can actually start to test him. A couple of shots maybe just to make Tex feel a little bit uncomfortable. As the couch quite rightly said, Tex hasn't performed particularly well in online tournaments as of late. Has fell himself out of the tournaments in the early stages and he doesn't want that to happen again as the through ball hits the post so close from Gorilla. It was almost there, Al. What a through ball. He did double tap the through ball button, the triangle button. And we almost seen the benefit of that. Very unlucky from Gorilla hitting the post there. He's creating those chances, though. The has indicated there will be a minute I don't know what it is about this matchup, but it's it's always been a special one. I mean, as I said, they played each other in Paris in FIFA 20. But when we think back to FIFA 19, that amazing comeback we saw in Bucharest, where Tex was down and out, and then he just brought it back against Gorilla. They always provide these entertaining matchups, and maybe Tex has been rattled a little bit. Manages to get the shot away, it's not going to be good enough, and that's probably going to be the halftime whistle. Yes, it is. So still nil-nil in this first leg, Alan. No one able to break through, but a couple of huge chances for both players. Yeah, and as you see here, we spent Natic Tex at the beginning of the match. He had those two shots with Johan Kroos sort of testing Gorilla's goalkeeper from outside the box. Um, and Gorilla almost scored right there at halftime. It would have been a very, very big goal. And this is what I wanted to mention, and he's bringing in... I believe somebody for Yoel Felix, which is Messi. I think he's going to bring in Messi. I'm very interested as to why Gorilla's going with Yoel Felix. He's not going with Neymar. A lot of people would probably go with Neymar. Um, and now we're seeing that he's going with Messi. Yeah, I mean, especially Neymar having the five-star weak foot, five-star skill moves. We, we've seen how important that weak foot is going to be. But I think anyone who has that five-star weak foot is going to be important on your team as we get back underway then for the second half of this first leg. As a reminder, it is going to be two legs between these players in this opening game of Group A. Nothing to separate them just yet. Certainly good chances for both. And I'd say Tex has looked the more dominant, but Gorilla does look scary when he gets the ball. And I think Tex has to be very aware of that because... Gorilla is going to try and frustrate Tex. He's going to sit back, he's going to defend a little bit, and then he's going to break away and bust out those skills, bust out that attacking football that we know he loves. Exactly. Gorilla has been very efficient on the counter-attacks whenever he does manage to take the ball away from Tex. However, though, I feel like Tex, whenever he starts going, whenever he gets that goal in, oh my goodness, it can be the start of a pour of goals. Oh, certainly, when, when those floodgates open, Tex is terrifying. Like, he, he gets confident, he starts to rattle his opponent, and they almost play into his play style because they start to attack more, they start to look for goals, and then he just absolutely slices them open at the back. I don't feel like Gorilla is going to play into that. I feel like he's a little bit more experienced than some of the competitors Tex might have gone up against. We'll see whether Tex can find something here. R9 is on the edge, twists, turns, does have the chance to lay it off, which he will to Kante. But there's Cruyff just to ensure that the defending yet again is superb from Gorilla. Oh, 
Possession has been regained up front. Tex and Gorilla looked like he was going to be able to break away, but instead, Tex answers back. And I think that's what both players have done very successfully here, Alan, is that they just had a good read on their opponent. And it seems like any way the ball is played, whether it's down the wing or through the middle, there seems to be an answer there. For sure, these guys have definitely been playing some very good defense. It's not that easy to break a solid defense like the guy, these two guys, competitors, are playing. So it's going to be sort of a battle. Whoever scores the first goal, I feel like this first goal is going to sort of dictate the tempo of this game and see someone's victory out. A chance for an attack on the left-hand side for Tex, but he opts just to recycle play, go back, play a little bit more smart. Doesn't want to give in to this counter-attacking possibility from Gorilla. And what would you say has to change from one of these to actually secure a goal? Because at the moment, we're seeing a little bit of a stalemate here. I would say play a little slower. I feel like these guys are definitely going full force, 100% speed at one another. To sort of create that chance, that gap, you know, play a little bit more possession, exploit the top of the box as we see here. Maybe something for Messi, though. Does beat the first man, can he beat the second? He opts to play it back to our nine! And Gorilla will open up the score and Tex could do nothing about that. It was patient, as you said, Alan. Just a little bit of that extra patience has helped Gorilla here. Exactly what we were just talking about. Gorilla's being very patient there. The super sub Messi making a big impact, assisting R9 there. The first goal of this E Champions League Invitational. And when I mentioned earlier about that, that elusive game in Bucharest, FIFA 19, when Gorilla had taken a lead and then Tex came back from like four goals behind or something ridiculous. And those kind of games, they live with you, don't you? When, you, when you're going up against that same competitor and you've had that experience before, you remember that. And I feel like that's going to change you as a competitor. You definitely do remember it. And let me tell you, it can sort of apply you. So Gorilla definitely has to brush that aside. It's a different game, a different FIFA, a different game, different tournament. So it's definitely going to have to sort of make up for what happened in that last matchup against Tex. Even though this is an online tournament, plenty of money on the line. $100,000 available, $35,000 for first place. And maybe Tex wants to get his share of that as he tries to break through with R9. But yet again, Gorilla is there with an answer, and it seems to be a pattern here. And now on the counter-attack with Messi, plenty of space to stretch his legs. He will just turn inside, wait for the little bit of support from the rest of the team. And there's that calm and slow presence that Gorilla has had to offer here. Exactly what you said he needed to get these goals, as Pullet will now play it into the middle. We'll find Mbappe, plays it quickly to Cruyff, to R9, back out to the left to Mbappe, and maybe this could be another chance. Nice little turn, but can't quite beat the man, but he's got a second bite of the cherry, almost. But Hullet will be there to stop him. Very good attacking play from Gorilla. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. He's giving Tex something to work on. It's very difficult on FIBA 20 whenever your opponent's sort of keeping possession, looking for all of the different possibilities around the pitch. You definitely have to be very patient if you're defending an attacking style like that because if you become impatient and start bringing players out of position, you can definitely concede a goal. Well, Gorilla just indicating the striker, strikers to drop back and join the defense here as well, just trying to hold on to this goal advantage as we get to the closing stages of this first leg. But that's a great through ball. Cruyff on his right foot to Stegen. Has been immense for Gorilla. It's three saves now. And all three of them have actually come from shots outside the box or just inside from Cruyff. As Mbappe now will turn on the edge, find our nine onto the left, but Militao is there. And Tex just cannot break through this defense right now. Tex, in my opinion, is currently not taking shots from ideal angles. We did see in the first half from Johan Cruyff, those sort of shots hardly go in. We've seen that last opportunity there. He could have maybe dribble a little bit more to secure that cross post finish. I feel like Tex is sort of needs to remain a little bit calm right now in the final third to bag a goal. Yeah, and even though we have got these restrictions on which players you can have and max four icons, I mean, you still got some of the best icons in the game. So no excuses, really. But something that I will always commend Tex on is his ability to come back into games, especially when it is a two-legged affair. He often just susses out his opponent in the first leg. And then the second leg, we see Tex just breathe new life into the game. I really feel like he could do with a, just a goal here, just to settle the nerves a little bit, just to get him back into the game. As he strides forward here with R9. Doesn't opt to take the shot instead. Tries to play it to Freud. And now these are some smarter runs. He's just not finding the end of the ball. 
as we see there, Patrick Vieira at the center back position. You guys are wondering why he's playing as a center back instead of his natural position as a center mid is because these players have been using him off chemistry on seven because honestly, I feel like in this year's installment, FIFA 20, you just cannot go wrong with Patrick Vieira at the back. He offers all of the different attributes that center backs need to have. He's there for a reason. He can definitely the win the ball. Has indicated there will be One of the best as we get into added time now of this first leg and it's going to be a last chance for Tex to try and get an equaliser before we jump into leg number two. Cruyff on the edge tries to turn but possession has been regained by Gorilla and that's probably going to be the final whistle. So first leg is going to go in favour of Gorilla. Tex just wasn't really able to get past the wall that Gorilla had built. Very successful defensive style from Grillo, it has to be said, and the counter-attack was pretty immaculate as well. Uh, I must say, I feel like after seeing what Tex is posting on social media, what games he's playing, I feel like he really hasn't been as motivated and determined to sort of practice his skill on even when he's been playing other games I've seen. Um, I've seen what he's talking about on social media, and I mean, maybe Gorilla has that upper hand of being a little bit more prepared in this E-Champions League Invitational. Well, I'm sure Tex won't want to be making any excuses as we jump into this second leg. And it is going to be a goal lead for Gorilla then, for Tex. He had a couple of opportunities, a couple of shots from outside the box, and a couple of through balls that went a little bit wayward. If he could just get on the end of one of those, he'd be right back into this game as Neymar now on the edge. will just try and turn away, flicks it up, but Hullet is there to deny it. A couple of cheeky attempts here from Tex, just trying something a little bit different on the edge of the box, Alan. Yeah, so it's a very good start, you know, just getting a feel, testing out Gorilla's defense there. We'll just stumble through, a nice little through ball, but just taken so quick to it to deny our nine. Tech's really just trying a couple of different things, whether it be a cheeky lofted through ball or whether it be a flick up on the edge of the box, maybe trying to surprise Gorilla and trying to stop Gorilla having that easy read that we saw throughout the opening stages of that first game as it's all possession for Tex yet again. Just waiting, biding his time, hoping he can be able to break through. But Gorilla, plenty of yellow shirts around R9, just straight shots away, but it's collided with the post, so close from Tex, and you can see his reaction, so close yet so far. Three shots already in the first 10 minutes of the second leg. It just goes to show you how Tex is in the attack, he just doesn't stop attacking you. So right after Gorilla, you have to play the best defense you have ever played if you want to come out victorious in this series. Finally, Gorilla getting a bit of a spell, a possession of his own now. You can see how aggressive Tex is pushing up with his fullbacks, something he's always done throughout every iteration of FIFA, really, utilizing those fullbacks to gain as much as he can from his defensive players, forcing Gorilla just to recycle the play here and spread the width from left back to right back as now Hullet under yet more pressure and Tex just can't quite win the ball though if Gorilla can break away he might have a man advantage on line can't get past Elba but good defensive strategy from Tex very different strategies from both of the players wouldn't you say Alan for sure I definitely think that Tex is currently playing the same formation for two through one but definitely in a different style he's keeping the possession he's not sort of attacking carelessly he's trying to exploit gorilla's defense at the moment on the other hand side of things we're seeing gorilla sort of attacking a little different as well it only makes sense because these guys know each other right now after playing in that first leg gorilla again just waiting and biding his time is caught from the edge and finally tex will break through he's been trying these long range shots from croy time and time again and he's rewarded with what a fifth attempt, Allen and Gorilla can just sit back and watch. He knew there was going to be that chance of a goal. And now we have our equalizer. And that right there, Dan, is the reason we've been seeing Fnatic Techs take those long shots outside of the box with Mr. Johan Koi. It paid out right there. There's a reason behind all of these players' attacks. They, they do it for a reason because they're very confident with it. They've seen success with it in for champions, division rivals, whatever it may be. These guys know exactly what they're doing. They're here for a reason. And that's one thing FIFA pros do so well is they play that percentage game, don't they, Alan, where they know the best chances of scoring goals. And considering the fact we've seen Tex consistently shoot from those areas with Cruyff, clearly he's onto something. 
and eventually was rewarded for his patience and his consistency and going for those shots but there's a through ball might not be offside so here's a chance for Mbappe could lay it across but no just finesses it around the keeper and Gorilla instantly strikes back and Tex is going to have to go straight back to that playbook what a goal from Gorilla there beating Texas high line he played that through ball some thought it was offside but it was onside and then to finish it off with that nice finesse shot with Mbappe great goal from Gorilla and how often do we see that in FIFA as well you've worked so hard to get back into the game to grab that equalizer but then right from the get-go Gorilla punishing Tex instantly to regain the lead here still plenty of time though in this second leg so Sure, Tex won't be too concerned, but considering how well Gorilla has been defending, that's something that he's certainly going to be considering at this point. How is he going to break through this defense? Does he go for those long range shots yet again? Is Ronaldo now trying to beat Cruyff? Is Cruyff just playing such a defensive role for Gorilla? You can see how many yellow shirts have tracked back and how difficult it is for Tex to break through here. There's just bodies everywhere, Alan. Yeah, I think Gorilla talked to Diego Simeon before this game with the game plan <laughs> because definitely he's, he's defending with all of his players, trying to hold that lead. Boyf with the drag back. Will be met, though, by the force of Patrick Vieira. Finds on line. Nice little scoop turn, and it's going to be 2-2. And that's what Tex has to offer. He knows how he wants to score. And as soon as you give him a little bit of an inch, he's definitely going to take a mile. And we're right back square here now. What a game we have at hand. We do see Gorilla showing some frustration there after he concedes that goal. It's just Tex, he's so dangerous. Once he starts clicking, the goals start pouring. And right now, back to even. Tex has shown that he can make a comeback. And this is where it all comes back to mentality and kind of keeping your level head as Gorilla, after being ahead twice, has seen Tex answer back now. And he just needs to keep doing more of the same. When you're Seeing your opponent answer back so quickly, it's very easy to change up your game style and maybe try a different formation. But Grilla, if he plays the same way, I feel like he is in a good spot right now. He definitely has a lot of answers to Tex attacks, but maybe this one for Neymar can prove otherwise. No, he has to play back. Is Kante going to be on the ball in the middle of the park? And it's it's more patient play now from Tex. Well, that's one hell of a through ball. Broke can't get past to Stegen. And Tex is really in the ascendancy. I just seen there, Gorilla played an offside trap and it almost haunted him. We do see Mbappe here with the clear chance. Oh, there's right foot, but on the finesse again. Just not able to beat the keeper this time. Almost just a replica of his first goal in this game. But end to end stuff now is from the corner. It's just going to be played short. Cruyff tries to beat the man, which he does. Finds R9 on the edge now to Militao. You don't want to shoot with him. Instead, R9 on his left foot, and there we go. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Gorilla straight away skipping that replay. No nonsense from him. He just wanted to get on with it. My goodness, Dad, this game is just going back and forth, back and forth. Gorilla taking the lead, Tex coming back, and then Gorilla taking the lead. Now it's a matter of Gorilla just holding the lead. It's easier said than done because he's coming up against a player like Tex who's just not going to stop attacking. You would have fallen right there. He won't stop. Neymar again on his right foot. Will he go for a shot? No, he just plays it out. And Tex was so close to making it 3-3 there. But what an insane first half. I mean, literally end-to-end -end action. And this is what I expected. I mean, when, when we were talking about these two in the, in the, the pre-show, I was thinking, all right, I'm expecting attacking football. I'm expecting them to go, both be going at each other's throats. And that's more of what I expected. But 3-2 to Gorilla still has the advantage, of course, because of that first goal in the first leg 2-2 Two -two in this second leg and Texas looked a lot better Alan is there anything you've noticed that was particularly different from leg number one so I feel like they've been playing uh, sort of similar to leg one but just with a little bit more confidence we do see that Gorilla though very important he's taking out Valverde to bring it in Conte I feel like if you're Gorilla here Dan you have to play as if it was equalized we did see that he did striker come back on defense after he took the lead but once again Maybe that's not working out for him. He needs to find that fourth goal. Or if not, Texas is going to come back and, you know, make the comeback of dreams. Well, 45 minutes left then of this second leg of this first match in Group A. Megabit and Dylan Mike are going to be going up against each other next. Two massive German names in the FIFA scene as we currently watch two of the biggest UK names going up against one another. And the winner of that game will, of course, play the winner of this game. 
and the loser of each play each other in the lower bracket as well. So plenty of FIFA coming your way today. As Cruyff just plays it back inside to Kante and it's possession yet again for Fnatic's Tex. New signing Fnatic Harry just behind him as well. And these two have become very good friends over the course of the years as Mbappe plays it inside to Cruyff, finds Kante next, but there's the other Cruyff. And as I said earlier, just so defensive, always back, always playing like a CDM. A little bit of a mistake, but it's okay. It's just going to be a free kick in the end. And I mean, 40 minutes to, to hold on to a game, Alan. I mean, you must have been in this position yourself. Like, are you reluctant to make changes here? Is that too much of a risk? For Gorilla right now, I would just keep on playing uh, with the same sort of style that I am playing, same formation. Um, just sort of continue keeping ball possession and try to find another goal. However, though, Tex, he just made a pause. I feel like now he's going to start making some tactical adjustments, maybe press after possession loss, pressure Gorilla a bit more. So Gorilla needs to be aware of that because you don't want that pressure to haunt you. And this was exactly what happened in Bucharest in FIFA 19. Gorilla just allowed Tex to have a little bit too much possession and he came back into the game. And those kind of things do live with you. And I'm sure he won't want to make the same mistakes as a couple of just keepy uppies there from Tex because he can see that there is literally no one in his side of the half. Gorilla with all 11 men back at the moment. And quite rightly so, because you don't want to give any sort of space or opportunity to Tex as he has to back off with Cruyff. Tries to beat the man, but look at the jockeying from Gorilla at the moment, just ensuring there is no easy pass whatsoever. And this must be frustrating, mustn't it, Alan? It really is frustrating. You see that Texas is just keeping that ball possession, trying not to make the forced pass to result in a turnover. We see that Tex also brought in Gareth Bale, some fresh legs. We see if Gareth Bale is, is a very big impact right there. We see that he dispossesses Gorilla. Gareth Bale always going to add a little bit of height to the team as well. Heading capabilities. I know FIFA 20, we don't really see that many headed goals, but there's always going to be that possibility. R9 now, just inside of the box. Nice little step over. We'll get up to the back, but it's so close yet, so far yet again, as Tex consistently hitting this post. Did well with the Elastico to beat the man, but unfortunately just not able to connect with the back of the net. As Harry just prays to the Lords. And it's, it's going to feel like that sometimes, isn't it? You just feel like you can do everything, but it's just not quite working out. Amazing build up from Tex there with the Elastico that we've seen him do plenty of times in previous FIFA events. Very unfortunate to hit the post there. That right there is the second post that he has in this series. He may be questioning right now, maybe asking himself if that's going to be the difference between Gorilla and himself. I feel like he just needs to continue attacking like how he's doing and Let's get that equalizer. Once he gets that equalizer, it's going to be a different game. Yeah, we've seen both of these players hit the post already this game. And that adds to that mentality, adds to that frustration that we were speaking of as well. If you start to think the game's against you, then you might struggle a little bit more. But look at the amount of space there is available for Gorilla. A nice little through ball, but Militao is going to be there with his raw pace. So I'm sure it's not going to be a comfortable through ball for Gorilla in possession yet again now. Back at the feet of Texas players. It's a nice through ball though, Mbappe will just fake shot around the man, just away from him as well, ball roll to ensure he gets a little bit more space, recycles back to Gareth Bale. And there are plenty of options in the middle, but he's just got to try and beat these yellow shirts and he manages to beat them with one pass, but denied yet again. Tex consistently knocking on this door, but Gorilla has padlocked it at this point. We can see that Tex is applying a lot of pressure. He needs to be careful, though, because one cheeky through ball from Gorilla can be the difference in this game. I mean, it's a 68th minute, 69th minute. Is, there's that through ball. I don't know how cheeky it is, but either way, it's going to be a chance for Gorilla to maybe get a two-goal advantage here, and that cushion would surely be enough to win him the game as here's R9. Plays a through ball to cry! Oh, and it hits the post! Where are the magnets in the balls right now? What is going on? Why are we seeing so much collide with the post? <laughs> That's a very good question. My goodness, they cancel out. They even out with the amount of posts that both of them hit. Two apiece. Very game-changing opportunities there, Tex. Sort of has a lifeline right there. 
because honestly, I feel like if Gorilla would have scored that, it probably would have been game over. Yeah, you'd have to think so. Two goals with 15 minutes or so remaining. It's very difficult even for the best players in the world in FIFA 20, but from the edge yet again, Tex tries to strike. So Stegen gets down well, and that's why he's going to be between the sticks, because he has consistently found decent saves for Gorilla as Patrick Vieira now on the ball. Can he find any more red shirts? Here's Militao. These are not the players that you want on the ball. He needs to find his big hit, heavy hitters, but Gorilla gets in. Here's Patrick Vieira, but it's end-to-end. -end. It's back and forth. Consistent tackles here from both players. But Gorilla has regained possession and beat the man. And he's got so much room in front of him now. Just needs to stop up, try and beat him, which he does. We're going to see a little pass across. Are we going to see maybe just a quick ball inside? And there it is to Cruyff. Can go back to the middle as well. But at this point, Gorilla just eating away at the clock, making things more difficult for Tex. And Tex is going to have to answer back here. He needs to regain possession soon, Alan. Ooh. Tangled up. He needs to win that. Does win it back. Line on the edge now. On the left-hand side, so many red shirts to get through. Cruyff back to Kante. One more in the middle to Mbappe, but not going to find the shot. And that means Tex can now break away. And there's so much room, so much space. Surely this is an equaliser. R9, little ball roll. It's easy. And we're at 3-3. And that was a gift of a goal. Oh, my goodness. An equalizer in the 83rd minute. The composure from Tex right there. Not letting the pressure get to him. He probably knew that was the last chance that he would have, the last good chance, and he takes advantage of it. To remain in this game, Gorilla definitely not going to be very happy about that one. We did see that Gorilla's line was all over the place. He left R9 wide open there. I mean, I've seen Gorilla like, kind of playing with the offside trap consistently throughout the game. And I didn't see him hit it, so I don't want to put it down to that. But certainly, Tex is going to be thanking his lucky stars that he was able to get such an easy opportunity in the end. I mean, it's all well and good when he's through on goal, me saying, surely this must be a goal, but I've seen those missed. It's a very pressure-filled situation in that 1v1, but the ball roll around the keeper is always going to be comfortable, especially if we see the goalkeeper movement, which we saw from Gorilla. And now we're all tied up 3-3 then, as we get into the last five minutes of this second leg. And for the majority, we've seen goals answered back quite quickly after one has gone in the other end. But I feel like this game might slow down a little bit. We might be seeing extra time here. Definitely. So I think that Tex is going to hold the ball for the last possession. That is what I would do. We do see another offside trap from Gorilla. Tex knows that if he scores this goal, it's going to be game over. Tries to hold it for the last bit of possession, but instead Gorilla just sneaks away. And this is a great ball on the right hand side. Black has gone up, but that's not because of Messi, that was because of a foul, so play on. Cruyff on the ball, he does have a shot available on his left foot if he wants it, but plays it inside to R9. Militao's there to rescue it for Tex. And maybe a last-ditch attempt to stop this from going to extra time, but good defensive work from Gorilla. And even though he was on the other, other side of the pitch, the referee does blow the final whistle. And that means, Alan, we've got extra time in our first game today. I mean, that's what we wanted, right? exactly what we wanted a great matchup that we have here between gorilla techs i'm not surprised these two competitors have shown their worth in this fifa 20 competitive season we have seen that gorilla has been a little bit more efficient with the chances he did receive he scored most of them on the other hand we have techs who sort of had the most chances out of the two but you know he just hasn't been scoring the majority of them but it's three all you got to forget about what happened the full time now, you just got to focus on the extra time. And both players have successfully found the post multiple times as well. And if just one of those had gone a couple of inches to the left or right, then maybe we'd have seen one of them walk away with a victory before extra time. But alas, here we are. Another 30 minutes of action and potentially penalties to separate these two if we can't find anything after the 30. It's Cancelo. And this right-hand side will slow it down now for Texas. He continuously finds possession in the early stages of any half, whether it be real time or whether it be extra time. A little spell on the right-hand side, finds Neymar on the edge, but a great sliding tackle from Kante. And yet again, good defensive work from Gorilla. Maybe a counter-attack available, though. That's a great through ball. 
Messi now just needs to go and go for a little bit of a freak shot, which he does, stops up, plays it inside, and it just can't connect with it. Cancelo, defensively perfect there, as Kante finds our nine, but Hullet will clear his lines, and Gorilla looking a little bit scary. Messi has been doing so good for Gorilla out wide in those situations, looking for the player inside the box. We did see that Gorilla scored a similar chance to the one that he just missed right there. Alba plays it inside to Messi, finds Hullet with his right foot, but to Stegen with a worldy of a save. And on both sides, to Stegen has really been the difference, as well as the posts, of course. Messi now finding Hullet, a little drag back. He is going to be met by two players in red shirts, but manages to find Bonat. And now here can be the breakaway for Tex. All the red shirts are streaming forward, but he's just going to wait. He's going to be patient here. does make sense when there's only a few minutes left of this first half of extra time you want to hold on to that last attack it, it's a free attack isn't it Alan we see so many players doing it for sure now white players use the cam the central the pitch the striker the fourth official has indicated he just offers a wing play inside of the pitch play it's just a great formation to use when, when attacking Tex has successfully held onto the ball for the final attack of this first half of extra time. Oh, nine. Nice little half-drag back, and okay, it's going to be a free kick, and maybe we can see something special here from the training ground. So often we just see the ball rolled across and then passed. Running out of time, though. Do need to be careful. R9 is there and waiting. And Tex opts to go for it does manage to find R9, drag back to left foot, but there goes the whistle, and that was going to be the worry for me, Alan, is that maybe I wanted to see a direct shot or just a dink into the box because of how far we'd gone into the time. Gorilla definitely very happy with the referee there. The referee calling a halt to the first half of extra time. I feel like that first half of extra time was all Gorilla. He had so many awesome opportunities there. The one where... The goalkeeper made a crazy worldly save, as you said. Holy almost scored there. A big chance for Gorilla. All to play for in this last half of extra time. We'll see if these competitors make any final super subs. Because let me tell you, very important to be utilizing substitutions. Get those fresh legs on. Those players that can really make a difference. 15 minutes in game for these two players to try and get their way through to the next round in just the group stage. I mean, this feels like a quarterfinal, a semifinal, it could even be a final with these names. And I feel like that's gonna be pretty much more of the same as we get through to other fixtures, as that's a little bit of a mistake there from Gorilla. All goes wayward and Tech's not quite able to take advantage of that. And if we're not careful, we could end up in a penalty shootout, but maybe Gorilla has something to say about that. Dembele with plenty of room to stretch his legs on the left. Needs to find a ball inside, which he does to Kroos, but Kulit is there to deny. And it's good defensive work on both ends. Pegs here, holding the ball with Neymar. Sort of impatient. I mean, you said it best earlier. You said that you wanted to see a little bit more patience from both of these players, and certainly Tex has found a different rhythm throughout this game. Considering in that first leg, he just wasn't really able to get going. I mean, if it does come down to a penalty shootout, is there anyone your favorite at all, Alan, or is it just one of those coin flips? I feel like Fnatic Tex will take it in a pinch shootout because the man behind him, Fnatic Harry, he has seen a lot of success whenever he steps up to the spot. We have seen that he's the self-proclaimed champion at taking penalty kicks. So maybe Tex learned a few tips and tricks all at the spot. I mean, maybe we did see Harry teach former teammate hashtag Tom out to take penalties and then lose to him in a tournament. That's always <laughs> going to be one of my favorite stories. It was just so unfortunate for Harry to end up going up against him and maybe something more of the same in this one. But still a chance. Maybe for Gorilla here, as he is just denying Tex of this possession, just starving him a little bit to ensure that he gets that final attack. 
I know people watching are probably thinking, why is he not going forward? Why is he not attacking at this point? And it's just to make sure that you don't have that possibility of the opponent going for a counter-attack if you give the ball away or if the shot doesn't go in the right the direction. Indicated there will be a minimum Almost works out as a free attack. And just with two minutes left, now we're going to start to see Gorilla edge forward here. Jordi Alba on the ball on the left-hand side. There is a through ball possibility if he wants it, but Tex denies, gets the ball, and maybe we could see a counter-attack. I said there was going to be the free counter. And it's not there. Vieira tackles. And we're heading to penalties in the first match of the day, Alan. Oh. I mean, this is exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting to have two closely contested competitors. And with these penalties, Tex is going to start things off. Goes left and he connects with the post. Oh. What is it with these players oh. and hitting the post? Gorilla fires the same direction, but he finds the net. Post magnets! Total five post in! What is going on? Mane steps up, goes in exactly the same direction for Tex, but maybe hitting that post could be so detrimental as Dembele is looking towards the right, sends it left, but Tex dives the right way. We're all squared up 1-1. One, one. And we get the long and slow run-up of Neymar. And where do you go? You go right, and it's a good penalty from Tex. You can see that Tex is glancing at Harry. Harry's giving him these, these tips, these instructions, and it's benefiting him. 2-2 two, two then. Who's going to crack first? As Cruyff now, he's had so many shots from outside the box. It's the post again, but this time it's good. As Tex takes the lead, and Gorilla has to answer back with R9. I've seen the player cam reaction. It's saved. And now Tex has the chance to go on in Group A. It's going to be R9. He sends it left. He's still alive and still knocking here. And now with Cruyff. It's, it's still 3-3. It's still 3-3, Allen. Gorilla's gonna be asking why his goalkeeper didn't save that one. Tex knew that he, he scored it. There it is. It's a scored. must score for Gorilla at 4-3 with Hullet. Sends it right. He's gone wide. And Harry looks towards Tex and he says, "Yeah, I knew you'd win a penalty shootout." Tex marches on in Group A. Gorilla drops down to the lower bracket because of the penalty shootout.